In the previous video, we went over drawing lines with our line writer. And so in this video, we'll be going over how to erase those lines so that if you make any mistakes, then you can easily erase them. And this is a continuation from the previous video. So if you haven't seen that, then the link for that is in the description, along with the link for the playlist. All right, now let's implement the eraser functionality, which is not as time consuming as the drawing functionality. So on erasing, let's make sure we're not drawing. If we're not drawing, then let's start our coroutine of erasing, which we're gonna specify now. And then here on end erase, it's the same as before. We can just say erasing equals false. So I'm actually gonna copy these functions and move them all the way down so we can have separate functionality. So up here is the drawing. So we can just say region drawing. And here we can end the region. And I'm just gonna get this private vector two get world point and I'm gonna put it at the end of the class so we can be a little bit more organized. All right, so let's make that coroutine. So IE numerator erasing. Then we say erasing equals true. While we're erasing, then we want to get our mouse position in screen coordinates. We want to use Unity's raycast function in order to shoot that screen position point into the scene. And if it hits an edge collider, we want to destroy the edge collider. And so I recently made a video doing something very similar and I'll put that in the description if you want more information on it. So let's do that. So let's get our screen position, vector two, equals, and then we can just say get current screen point. So let's make another function that instead of the world point returns the screen point. So right here we can just say private vector two, get current screen point. And all this is doing is calling the input manager. So return input manager dot get mouse position. This is to make stuff a little bit neater. So if we need that function later, we can just call it. And so what I like to do for these kind of things, we have to make a raycast right now. So I'm actually going to make it in another script, create C sharp script, and I'm going to call this utils. So here I can just erase these functions, erase mono behavior since we don't need that. And I can just erase these two namespaces and we can make this class static. So here you can put all your utility functions that you can access through any script. So we can make a utility function for ray casting. So public static game object. So this is returning the game object we're hitting. And we can just say ray cast and let's pass in our camera, main camera, which we need and the vector two screen position. All right, so we can just say ray ray. That was kind of funny. Main camera dot screen point to ray. Unity converts that screen point to array automatically, which is really cool. And let's just pass in our screen position and then we'll get back a ray cast hit 2D. And we can just call that hit 2D. When we call physics 2D dot get ray intersection and we can pass in our ray. And if we actually hit something, so if hit dot collider does not equal null, then we will return that game object. So hit dot collider dot game object. Else we return null. If you're interested in what get ray intersection does, it casts a 3D ray against the colliders and it returns the first one it hits. All right, so back to our line manager script, we can say game object G equals utils dot ray cast. And then we can pass in our main camera as well as our world mouse position. And then we can say, if we actually hit something, then we can destroy the line which we will make that function right now. And then we can just say yield return null. So you need this in the while loop because it always needs to re yield return null on every frame of an IE numerator. And then we can say private void destroy line. And we need to pass in our game object. So up here, let's just pass in the game object G. And then here we can say game object G. And so we can actually check if we're hitting our line by using a layer. So let's actually create a layer. So let's go to our manager and under layer, let's add a new layer and let's call that layer lines. And so this is an easy way to check if we're hitting something on that layer. And if it's a line, we just destroy it. So we can actually do that here or we can do that in our utils by passing in a layer. 
So let's just do that in our utils. So let's say int layer, since every layer corresponds to an integer. And so for our get ray intersection, we can just say math f infinity, which is our distance because in order to put in our layer, we actually need another parameter, which is the distance. And this is the default anyways. And then we can just pass in our layer here. In our line manager here and destroy line, we can say destroy G. And then here we have to pass in our layer. And so there's an easy way to do this without actually passing in a layer. So you can see right here that our layer is eight and eight is a wonderful binary number, one zero zero. And all layers are based on binary. So right here, I have an example that I found on Google. So this is a binary number, it just consists of ones and zeros. We actually start on the right value, reading it from the right. So binary is just a base two number, decimal is in base 10. So the only two numbers you can have is zero and one. And so this is the biggest number, and this is the smallest number, and it goes from one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, etc. And so uh, the binary number that we want is one, zero, zero, which is just an eight. And we can easily do that right here by saying one, and this is called a left shift, since you can, you can tell it's a left shift because it's pointing to the left. And we can have a three. And so all we're doing here is pushing one to the left three times. So then, Right now it would be zero, zero, zero. And then we have a zero, zero, one when we push it once to the left. And then when we push it three times, we will have a one, zero, zero, which is eight, which is the layer that our lines are on. And I just realized I never set the layer of the line. So let's go to our settings here. And right down here, we can just say current line object dot layer. And we can just say, the same thing, one left shifted three times. Um, before that, I noticed that on erasing, I put world mouse position, one in reality, it's screen mouse position. It doesn't change anything, but just to be a little more neat, this actually takes in a layer mask. And so let's account for that. So instead of layer, let's say layer mask, and a layer mask is not a layer index. So currently right here, we set our layer to eight, which is one left shifted three times or one zero zero right but in here we have to pass in the layer mask and the layer mask is actually a one position in our number where our layer is so let me just make an example so let's say we have eight layers so eight zeros one two three four five six seven eight and of course you read a binary number from right to left so we're going in that direction and so we actually have to go seven times to the left so we have to say one two three four five six seven so this is our seventh bit and we would have to set that one to one and and that's how unity uses layer masks for its ray casts it's different than a layer index so instead of left shifting one three times which would be this case and that would activate the third layer we would have to shift it over seven times or eight times, however amount of times that we set our layer to. So in our case, our layer is eight. So we'd have to left shift it eight times. Basically think of a zero as an index. So this is the first layer, second layer, third layer, and then fourth layer. And so we're just setting here our layer. So now we can just start drawing and now it will be erasing. Awesome. So that's the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching. In the next video, we'll be going over setting up the player and adding physics to it, as well as making the camera follow the player when you press play. I want to thank all my patrons and I want to give a shout out to Wolf Graphics LLC, who's a new patron. Thank you so much for all the support. I really appreciate it. If you're interested, the link to my Patreon is in the description and I offer source code as well as early access and an exclusive Discord chat. And if you haven't already, feel free to join my Discord chat where you can ask questions or just chat. So thanks so much for watching and see you next time.